Hey, welcome to the Relentless Pop Duty Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Martin. I got a guy today. His name's Tony Rambles, and he's an award-winning teacher. He makes it his mission to add value to people in whatever way he can. And he's also a podcast host. You're about to see a little variety pack of what he's capable of, because he can, he can speak on a wide variety of subjects, and that's what his podcast is all about. So, uh, Tony, man, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Uh, I appreciate it. It's going to be a wild one. Yeah, no doubt. So if you're watching the video, you can kind of see he's got a lot of a variety, even in his background, kind of some of the interest. So you can get some little Easter eggs back there. Maybe you can pick out some of the things he's interested in. So uh, or I'm going to give him just some rapid fire questions, just some way, way variety, like a set of variety pack of questions. First thing, what's the favorite thing in your closet right now? Right now, my favorite thing in my closet easily are my hats because okay. they have my logo on it. You know, I can wear them anywhere. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. And, you know, we we try to take us everywhere we go. And I feel like I'm more than just one thing, right? I'm more than just my job. I'm more than just my podcast. And so this is just a way to showcase to people, you know, what's possible. You know, what you can do if you put your mind to something. If you have some, some fire, you have some vigor for something to go after it. And, uh, you know, take it as far as you can. So Absolutely. my hats, I got a black one and I got a blue one. Oh man, that logo is cool. I see why you like that, man. That that look that pops out there on that blue right there. So, all right, let's let's go to this. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? So this one was was hard. I'm not gonna lie, but I think the best piece of advice um, that I have received, we'll go recent, is anger is the opposite of patience. Uh, yeah. So. If you find yourself getting angry, it's probably because you lack patience in a certain area. And so now you have to I think self-evaluate. Okay, what have I done? It could be wrong. It could be different. Not everything is right and wrong. Um, but what could I do differently? What could I do better? Um, is this a me thing or is this a them thing or that person? So I think when you start to look at things from that perspective, you can then reevaluate more thoroughly. Absolutely. I mean, I noticed that uh, people are much better drivers when I leave on time. You know, when I've got me, I give myself plenty <laughs> of time when I'm running late, man, nobody knows how to drive. I don't know what that deal is. I, you nailed that one, man. So uh, all right, next one's kind of kind of related. But what's one of your favorite quotes? Love conquers all. Yes, sir. Yeah. Love conquers all. I feel like if you can learn how the action of love, what that looks like in different contexts, then I think you'll typically come out on top and everybody will be better not always happy because sometimes love is saying uh no you can't move in because you are irresponsible however maybe i'll try to help you find a place to live right that person may not necessarily be happy in that moment but love is sometimes protecting what you have around and then sometimes love is inviting others into what that may be so uh love conquers all is definitely one of my favorite quotes and something that i try my best to live by Nice, man. I like that. So uh, how did you get your nickname? I can probably guess, man, but how did you get your nickname? So my real name is Anthony Franklin, and I didn't think that was much of a, a podcast name. <laughs> so uh, I go by Tony. Um, my wife calls me Tony. Everybody who met me after high school calls me Tony because my dad was like, you know, I don't want people calling him Tony. That's not his name. So I didn't really start going by Tony till maybe 20, 21 ish something okay. like that. So Tony is where the first name came from. And then I was just trying to think of a cool name. So I'm like, okay, I'll be podcasting. I'll be talking, you know, conversing. Tony talks is kind of a really easy one, but I thought that was too easy, too simple. And then Tony rambles. I was like, okay, I think we got something. I think we got something. So that's where the name came from. Tony rambles. It flows off the tongue, man. I like it. It's it's unique. New Tony Tony talks to to uh, do vanilla, man. That doesn't suit you. So you yeah, I talk. agree. <laughs> Tony rambles suits you, man. So, all right. How about your favorite movie of all time? That's a tough one, right there. What's your favorite one? Oh, easy. The Matrix. Oh, the okay. first one. Right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, The Matrix changed the game. It changed everything. That's... Yeah. And it was like. You know, I'm a big sci-fi fan, but I want it to be like just close enough to reality where you go, you know what? Maybe that could happen. Like that could be possible. So when you watch that and you see Trinity, I mean, the action sequences are, are amazing from jump, but you see it, the Trinity and the Neo relationship, you see Morpheus, it's like 
the dang on Godfather, you know, he's controlling the action, you know, how people think. And then you go, maybe there is a red pill, blue pill that I'm not aware of, you know, a simulation. That's a big thing now, but the matrix started it. So definitely the very first matrix movie, I was like, what the, what did I just watch? Yeah. yeah that's one of my favorites. My favorite. Number one. Well, I remember back in the day, man, there was like, you know, I'm kind of old, but like Dick Tracy cartoon strips and people be talking to their phone. Like, I was like, man, that's amazing. Now everybody's doing it. You walk down and people are talking. And so, hey, anything's <laughs> possible, right? That's that's getting a little too close now, too scary with all this AI stuff, man. It's uh, maybe it's hitting too hard. So, all right, how about this? Describe yourself as a teenager in three words. Okay. It's hard for me to do this because I... I don't know exactly how I was as a teenager, right? As far as perspective is concerned. Mm -hmm. So I would go, number one is shy. I feel like I didn't talk that much. Uh, my number two will be underestimated. My number three will be underutilized. I don't think I really branched out into what I could really do in high school or as a teenager because it was kind of all football. You know, it was all about sports, you know, with my dad. And I love sports. I still do. And I have fun. I love playing football. But as I gotten older, I've realized, like, I love, like, theater and acting. That stuff is so cool to me. I Maybe one day, you know, one day I'll be able to push my way into that lane, you know, if I if I get a, become a big shot. But um, also uh, things like being involved in like leadership or clubs. Like I didn't know what anything like DECA, you know, speaking, I was not a speaker like, like this, but I feel like if I was pushed maybe in a few different directions, more doors would have, would have opened up. So definitely shy, underestimated. Cause you know, being a black kid, you know, baggy pants, baggy shirt, cornrows, you know, we're looked at a certain way in this country. Uh, and so I don't think people always expected the things that I would say, because I was a, well, a smart kid. I'm still s smart, but, you know, you're not always people put us, we p get put in boxes. Everyone sure. does, yeah. you know, so that and then the underutilized part yeah. for sure. That's uh, a good answer, man. I me definitely had, had, me more had a similar past, man. I, I was a shy kid growing up, played football. That was my main thing. That's all I really cared about. Uh, and I'll give you some hope, man. I just wrapped up my first TV show as an actor. I never thought in a million years. Get out of here. No, dude, I played a FBI detective. So it's a TV show coming out probably next month or so, something like that. So uh, hey, anything's possible. Send me that man. link. Yeah, I'll get up for sure, man. It's going to be good. I can't wait for it to come out. So, and this, it wasn't even on my radar. It just kind of fell out of nowhere. So, man, just, hey, you put it out in the universe. Uh, so, how would your students describe you as a teacher? So, you know, at the end of the year, a lot of people, they'll write notes to their teachers and stuff, or people will talk to their peers. The kids will go, oh, Mr. Franklin is chill. He's a chill teacher. And so I always ask the question, like, okay, what does that mean? Like, they're so vague. <laughs> but I think that's the word that they would use to describe me. They would say that I care. I care about my kids. I care about the outcome. They would say that I'm not mean, but I am very particular about a few things. Mm -hmm. That if you kind of press these buttons, you can get on my bad side. But for the most part, they'll say I'm chill. I'm down to earth. Like, you, I like to talk. I want to, again, I want to connect with kids. I'm random because I'll just say anything almost, you know, as long as it's appropriate, obviously. But, you know, I'm always looking at people's phones and seeing what's going on. Hey, what you doing? What you looking at? Who is that? Who you talking to? So I think uh, that's that's how I would be described by my kids if if you got all of that. Yeah, chill. hey, chill's a compliment from kids, man. That's a compliment for sure. So, kind of along the same lines, what what's a pet peeve of yours? When people are just mean, and so, like when I see people that curse, oh man, when people curse at, at other people. Now I know that there are some words that people say that are just in conversation. You know, it's not directed at someone to demean, but. Cursing is just something that I, I really am not a big fan of. But when people are mean just for no reason and they just pick at people or you have a kid going at an adult, I'm like, just, you know, let's try to find a different way. 
You know, I just, I don't like when people are mean. I know it's very elementary, but you'd be surprised by the things that you see in the classroom of kids that could be from 14 to 19. And it could get pretty, pretty nasty if you don't shut it down right away. And then don't even talk about the hallways. I mean, oh. they, anything could, it's kind of fair game in the hallway. You never know <laughs> what you might hear, but even there, I would say, hey, you know, language or something, you know, so just general meanness is a pet peeve of mine. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Hey, you, you see something with teenagers for sure. So, um, so what's the best thing that's happened to you this month? This month, I had a massive issue with my phone and I am going to change phone companies and save myself a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes things happen and so you got to learn how to deal with them and speaking of being mean a lot of times we call these customer service lines and they're just they're horrible right most of the time with customer service it's roll of the dice if you get the right person who knows what they're doing and knows how to talk to people then they'll make a world of difference in your experience with this company i didn't get any of those people four or five times calling, massive issue. I said, you know what, it's over. That's it. Y'all not getting any more of my money. It's time to go. And so now my wife and I, were going to save some money, but uh, it, it definitely tested my patience uh, to be able to not curse at these people, uh, try not to raise my voice at these people. So it's like all the stuff that I want to preach to people, I don't even like the word preach, but all of the things that I like to ask people to do now I was put in the same situation. Okay, now, now you're on. Spotlight's on me. Even though it's just me in the car with my phone, I still try to be that example. And when those times arise, you know, you want to practice what you preach. You know, you want to walk out to talk. And so even when I felt myself getting upset, um, I would I would find a way to bring it down and go, you know what? You know what? I am not making a personal attack at you, but your company is making me very upset. So <laughs> if you cannot help me, please transfer me to somebody who can. Right? I would have to have this all the time. I'm having this talk in my own head, like, okay, yeah. let's bring it down. Let's bring it down. <laughs> let's go from a nine. Let's get back to a four. And let's even this thing out. Cause you know, most oftentimes you catch more bees with honey than with vinegar anyway. And I honestly just wouldn't want people talking to me that way. So you know, bring it down a level, a couple levels. So um, that was some good practice for me. That's going to be a relief, man. When your phone works and you don't pay as much and you don't have to deal with people like that, it's going to be life changing, man. I hear you. So, uh, you all go. right. So when are you most inspired? You know, some people like nature, some people like music. When are you most inspired? Honestly, and we talked about this a little bit before, before we started, I'm inspired when I'm talking to other people who want to do something right even if it's just hey you know i was thinking about working out i'm going so okay what's your plan what you know what do you think like what what's your goal like once people are wanting to do something now i'm like okay let's let's get it done you know let me help you in any way that i can it's all about again it's about people so when i'm talking to people who want to get stuff done who it can be big it can be small you know any way that i can help that inspires me. So whenever I'm doing these podcasts and I'm talking about people's stories and where they come from, the things that they've been through, those kind of things help me to go, man, you know, life ain't so bad. Yeah. Or, you know, man, that person is awesome. Or, man, I think I want to try to do something like what they're doing. Like right now, you just talked about, hey, man, I just finished up my first show. I'm like, what? Get out of here. So yeah. now I'm looking at, all right, shoot. Yeah, what can I get an audition? Yeah. You know, who can I send my tape to? You it's know, possible, those man. kind of things. Yeah. They really invigorate me. So when people are are moving and trying to get stuff done, big or small, those are the things that inspire me. And um, I think just music, you know, is, is another thing that when I when I want to get some work done, you know, I throw on some snarky puppy, some fusion jazz, or some some old school, um, maybe some some hip hop instrumentals. But uh, I like to keep the music going. You know, sometimes it'll, it taps a different kind of button in us as people. I don't know what it is about music and these melodies, but 
uh, music definitely helps me along the way for sure. Cool. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna switch gears a little bit. So, uh, who is your uh, NBA MVP this year? I, I need your like your main pick and then like a dark horse. Okay, so this one I was like, all right, hey, let me let me look at some stats. Let me look at where we are five games in, and I think an easy pick, uh, Giannis. He's so good. He's so dominant, and he's so efficient. And he he attacks every facet of the game, right? I think Luca, in the same way, he does a lot of those things that Giannis does. A um, little bit in a, in a different way as far as he's not super athletic, he's not super long, but he finds a way to make an impact on the game. Uh, I think those are easy picks. Ja is a very trendy pick right now. Ja Morant, uh, just because of his athleticism, his showmanship, his attitude, you feel like people like playing with that guy. They like him. That's very easy to see on the basketball team where we're out on the court and things are happening. Uh, I got two dark horses, though. Okay, if this team can be as good as they're supposed to be, and I think we've said this every year about this team, the Clippers, <laughs> I think if, if, Ka if Kawhi can play 70-ish games, that may be asking a lot for him and they are at the top of the conference. I think Kawhi is an MVP pick. And if you think that's a dark horse, listen to this one. This guy will have the stats 100%, and he is the engine for this team. If this team overachieves, I mean, maybe top three seed, Trey Young okay. can be a guy where you go, man, he's averaging 28 and 10. You know, he's not getting killed on defense like he was before because he's got some help behind him. He's got DeJounte Murray there to help him as well. And that team is a top three seed in the East. I mean, now, am I a big fan of Trey Young? I think he's great at what he does. But in my star player, I need somebody to be able to play both ends of the floor. I want somebody with more size. But if you're just talking about somebody who can affect the game, especially on the offensive end. Yeah. Trey young can, can do it all. So I think he's, uh, if Kawhi is a dark horse, then I would say Trey young is a, a darker horse, <laughs> black beauty, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw a, yeah, one. I'm, I'm going Jason Tatum this year, man. Jason Tatum. Ooh, okay. That's, that's my guy. So you heard it here first when he finishes like 30th in the MVP race, you heard it. You heard it here first. All I right. Like cool. Tatum. All right. How about your NBA rookie of the year? Who you got? Rookie of the year. I think when you start talking about rookies, you have to look at opportunity and what Paolo is going to be able to do out there in Orlando. And I think this was the argument from day, from day one, right? Can you run your offense through check? The answer was kind of like maybe one day, not right now. Yeah. Can you run your offense through Jabari Smith in Houston? Maybe one day, not right now. Can you run your offense through Paolo? The answer was yes. And he has the size, he has the athleticism, he has the game. And you see it right away in Orlando. The dude's averaging, I think, 24, 25 points a game, 34 minutes. So he's pretty much the engine of that team. And so he'll have the most opportunity. Now, there's a guy that I thought, I, I mean, I think people knew he was, he was good, but Ben Matherin, out in Indiana is making some noise really early. And again, he's going to have opportunity because you got Halliburton there, who's the best player, but he's not necessarily a scorer like that. And so Ben Matherin will have tons of opportunity to really show what he can do, really get his hands on the ball. And plus, you don't have anybody over there that's, you know, that's a big time score. You don't have anybody over there that's, you know, I need the ball, me, me, me. So he'll have opportunity. Now, my homer pick is definitely Jaden Ivey. Okay. <laughs> Being from Detroit, that dude is electric on the floor with it. his athleticism, his playmaking. If his shooting can come along a little bit, that's definitely going to help his position. But that dude, again, he will have tons of opportunity, and they're putting the ball in his hands. So I think Jaden Ivey is definitely an, an upside pick. He could – easily winning uh, but I think Paolo is going to be the front runner and it's 
it's going to be much easier for him because there's literally nobody else on that team that can score. So maybe Cole Anthony, but he's not a rookie. Oh, there you go. See, I'm an Auburn homer, so I'm going Jabari. So I got to go Jabari Smith. So I'm definitely a homer on that. So, uh, all right, who wins the whole thing this year? Who wins the NBA championship? I think Giannis is unstoppable. I'm with you. You can't stop Giannis. I think Boston loses if they have Chris Middleton. Because look at what Giannis was really able to do by himself, and it was tough for him. It was real tough. But, again, that was a full, full squad over there with Boston. And he was missing his second best player in a really good score and defender in Chris Middleton. So I think Giannis is, is so undeniable. It, what can you do with him? There's never been a player like him. Funny story. I was uh, in the store and I saw this older guy and there was a game on. I was watching it. He was watching it. And I said, excuse me, uh, can I ask you a question? Of course he said, yeah. I said, um, you will be considered to me because the guy had some gray in his beard. I think he had maybe some gray hair. I said, you'll be considered an OG. Have you always watched basketball? Like, do you, are you really into basketball? He said, yeah, yeah, I've been watching basketball my whole life. I said, okay, good. Has there ever been a player like Giannis? He said, no, no. So for young people like me, I'm only 33. It's easy to go, oh, you know, there's never been a player like him. So I'm like, let me ask somebody who's been watching basketball their entire life. Because there are some people that that I that we remember because we watched it. Like nobody remembers like Lindsey Hunter, but I remember Lindsey Hunter. He yeah, was a, guy, a yeah. pest on defense. He was a, a a guy that could just get in there and mix it up, and he could hit some. He was real timely. But that's not somebody people just remember, right? <laughs> Darvin Ham. I remember he played for the Pistons, and he could dunk, and he was a big dude, big and strong, right? So I'm asking this guy because he's got some more, some years on me. He says, no, there's never been a guy like Giannis. And I think that's evident with his dominance. So I think the Bucs can definitely, and they they will win it because nobody can handle him. My next pick would be, I mentioned his team earlier. I mentioned this guy earlier, the Clippers. I mean, when, when you get Kawhi and PG, man, that's tough to deal with. Who's got two guys that can hang with those two guys? And it's all about big wings, right? If you look at the best players in the league, they're always big wings. You know, Michael, Kobe, even Magic. People will consider him a a point guard, but the dude was 6'9". He can handle the ball. He can get to the basket. In our game, he will be a point forward. That's a big wing, right? Carmelo, LeBron, PG, Kawhi, big wings. They run the league. So, with that being said, they have maybe the best big wing. And Paul George is another, what, top five big wing, right? How many people can you put ahead of him with his skill set and his size? He's 6'9". So I think that the Clippers uh, have a compelling case. Will they stay healthy in the playoffs? Can they make it through? I don't know. But I think that's a, those are my two picks. Uh, because of their best players are are pretty tough to hang with for most teams. There you go. I'm telling you, man, this dude could have his own sports show. I'm telling you, if this thing doesn't work out, man, you go go all sports if you wanted to. But I know you got a lot of interest. <laughs> so all right, we're going to switch it up again. So what's the best compliment you've ever received? <sighs> best compliment I've ever received? I'm going to go with a recent one. Uh, Mr. Franklin, you made a difference. Ah. You made a difference in my life. So I had this uh, student, she moved over here from overseas, uh, a Middle Eastern country. I don't necessarily remember which one, but her parents are still over there trying to get to America. So this kid, her parents are not here. And uh, maybe she lives with a, a grandparent or aunt or uncle, I think is a situation like that. But that's, you know, that's not mom and dad. And I think she has a brother over there too, a younger brother or sister. And this kid was a rock star in my classroom, was a rock star. And I could just tell, you know, she was, she's more mature, way beyond her years. And so she inspired me. So I'm like, yo, her parents are not here. She's a teenager. She's going through high school. There's got to be a lot going on. She's in a, her parents are in a country that is not the safest. Yeah. So just to see that I made a difference in her life. And she told me in person, 
maybe maybe two weeks ago, maybe less. Like you made a difference in my life. You you can't even understand how much of a difference you made. Just me being in your class for one semester and you just continuing to to talk to me and help me and in any way that you could, that made the biggest difference. And so to hear those kind of things from the people that you're around, because a lot of times we make a difference, we don't know because they never tell us or they see us down the line and maybe they maybe they say it, or maybe they never see us again. So we don't know that that impact that we always that we make sometimes. So to hear that and to be able to see that kid in person and see him on announcements and doing great things, I'm like, yes, that's why we do it. That's what I'm here for. So, uh, yeah, biggest compliment. You made a difference, Mr. Franklin. Oh, man, that's all you want to hear, right? You made a difference. That's Yeah, yeah. Good on you, man. Good on you for helping her out. I know she's, that's probably, she'll never forget you. That's pretty awesome. So yeah. how about this? What's something you bought for less than a hundred bucks that was life changing? Microphone. There you go. <laughs> Changed everything, man. When I decided to be a podcaster or decided to start my podcast, I would consider myself a podcaster and until I, I started, I got consistent with it. Uh, but man, you, you buy a mic and you decide to do it and you take that leap. Uh, first mic I bought is, is sitting in the closet there, 45 bucks, Amazon. And you go, all right, here we go. Let's do it. You start buying stuff. You know, you got to make it happen. That's right. So definitely something that was life changing uh, for me, because I hope that my hope is that podcasting will uh, eventually become a full time thing that I do all the time. And, you know, I'm bringing people in. Maybe I have my own studio and people can come in and sit down and we can have the same kind of conversations we're having now. So definitely microphone. Nice, sure. man. All right. Hey, y'all see how we can operate, right? I threw all kind of stuff at him, man. He covered it like a champ. So, and that's, that's how he does. He speaks on every subject. That's how his podcast works. Go check it out. The Living Numbers with Tony Rambles. I'm telling you, if you vibe with this right here, if you liked what he's, what he's throwing out here, if you like NBA, if you like, I don't know, hit the housing market, it might be anything, man. If you just like how he talks, he's just a good dude who has good conversations. We need more of that in life, right? So go check him out. Living Numbers, Tony Rambles. Hey, thanks so much for coming on, man. I really enjoyed sitting down with you. Thanks, Joe. I enjoyed it too. Uh, it's always good to talk with good people and see what comes out from it. Absolutely. Hey, you guys go out and share this. Somebody, people need to know this guy, right? He's putting out good energy in the world. You need to know about his podcast, share it with them out here and uh, look for him to be an actor in the next year or so. So that's, that's next on the list, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we come. All right. We're putting it out in the world. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll go out and share this episode. We'll see you guys next week.